All right, good morning, everybody. Um, I'd like to start with uh, another quick land acknowledgement. Uh, we acknowledge this conference is being held on the unceded traditional territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Sawatooth nations. Thank you. Um, I'd like to leave this in. I'm not going to be talking about any particular Oracle products, um, but you know, if I were, I'm not speaking on behalf of the company. Um, which is not to say that, you know, eventually Oracle's going to ship a new kernel, um, and I'm not making any commitments which one, but uh, one of the things that we do notice uh, when building our um, ARM64 kernels is that on some benchmarks it's really important to have a 64K page size, and on other benchmarks having a 4K page size wins. Um, and uh, a large chunk of that reason is that managing memory in four kilobyte chunks is just inefficient. Um, sometimes it's really handy to only write back the four kilobyte chunks which are dirty, uh, so that will be a reason to win. But just having to scan each individual 4K and ask, are you dirty, is quite a performance loss. Um, but we have many other problems. Um, I mean, Linux as a whole has many problems. Uh, and uh, folios do not address all of them, but uh, some of the ones that we uh, can help with with uh, the whole folio project uh, listed on this slide. So um, the, the struct page, as I think everyone in the room probably knows, is used to store a certain amount of state about every single page in the system. Um, but it's, it's a shared data structure. Everybody uses it. And so if you grow it for one use case, you grow it for all use cases. Um, when some users would very much like to shrink it, um, it's very hard to change it from its current size uh, because somebody's always going to push back on you. So what we're doing here is largely splitting it out for each use case. And so here's where I think we're going to end up. We're going to end up with struct page shrinking to a single pointer, an encoded pointer. Um, the bottom few bits will, will tell you what kind of thing we're pointing to, what kind of data structure we're pointing to, and the rest of it will actually be the, the pointer itself. And here, here are some examples of, of, of where we're going to get to. So slab is already split out, thank you to Vastamil. Um, we're going to do page tables, um, ZS malloc, hardware poison becomes its own thing, struct folio, the progression is already underway here, uh, netmem, freemem, and devmem. I, I, th these are the ones I anticipate. Exactly what will happen? Uh, reserve, maybe. Um, may maybe we'll have a reserve data type. May maybe reserve doesn't actually need a data structure allocated to it. It will simply be a special representation in this field. But yes, you're, you're, you're quite right. We, we, we don't need the page flag. So we can, we can free up the page flag of page reserved, and we'll replace it with a reserved uh, memdesk. So how close are we to being able to do this? Uh, when people ask me, I generally say, oh, two years. I don't know. How, how, how long is a piece of string? I, I, I was a little bit nervous about putting up this metric because as soon as, as, soon as you put up a metric and you say, Here, here's how we can measure how we're doing, people then start trying to game that metric and say, well, we're doing so much better than last year because look at this metric. I'm going to use a different metric next year. <laughs> So don't start submitting patches saying, I've reduced the number of struct pages in the kernel by you know, 200, and this is going to really show up well on Matthew's stats next year. I'm going to choose something else. I, I, I have lots of different things I can use to measure how, how are we doing towards eliminating struct page from the kernel. Um, so we have over 1,000 commits which mention folios. That's not to say that we have 1,000 commits which are doing the work of converting from struct page to struct folio. Um, many, um, about a hundred of them have the word fixes in them, or actually the, the tag fixes colon. Um, they're not all fixing bugs in earlier conversions. <laughs> uh, many of them are fixing uh, other bugs, but contain the word folio somewhere in the commit message. Um, but here are some of the more significant things that we have managed to do since the start of the folio project. Um, converted the page cache to folios, we split, we split out slab, um, we've, we, we recently uh, moved all the, um, all the 
tail page components of struct page into the folio. So we're, we're now, we now no longer have a section that says, oh, this, this, the, these elements are only valid in the first tail page. No, that, that's all gone. So you, you don't have to worry about looking at some of these things and wondering what they do. We've just shrunk the size of the, the, the data structure so that people are less confused when they're looking at it, which is always a good thing. Um, there's an asterisk by the address space operations conversion because there are, I think, three functions in the address space operations which still take a struct page, but that's because we're going to delete them rather than uh, convert them. So um, don't send me patches to convert the three remaining functions. The idea is that we're going to get rid of them. Uh, I know Christoph is working hard on one of them and uh, the others will be, go away when we switch all the file systems over to IOMAP. Pause for laughter. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so we've, we've converted um, five file systems entirely to support high order, sorry, four files, uh, three file systems and two support layers. Um, IOMAP and, NET and NetFS are support layers. XFS, AFS, and EROFS all support uh, multi-order uh, large folios. Um, so that's really great. We have converted ext4 and NFS to use single page folios. So we're getting some advantage here in that we are making progress towards using, um, using folio APIs and away from using page APIs. But we aren't addressing the fundamental problem that led us to start this project, which is that we need to manage memory in larger chunks because they could still only do single page folios. Um, that's regrettable, but um, it, there, there, there are underlying, underlying problems, that, at least for, I know about for ext4. I haven't spoken to the NFS people about why they went with a single page folio approach. Uh, TempFS and huge TLBFS are a little bit different to each other. Um, they both already supported large folios in the form of either transparent huge pages or just huge pages. Um, so th th those conversions are ongoing. TempFS at some point needs to be able to support arbitrary size folios. Right now it supports two sizes, single page or THP size, which is sort of two megabytes on x86 and maybe 16 megabytes on some architectures, something in that order. But it doesn't support arbitrary sizes yet, and that, that's just work that needs to get done at some point and hasn't been a high priority for anybody to do. So that's an open project if anyone wants to tackle it. We have get user pages converted to user folio internally. The external API for that is still page-based, but internally it's, still, it's now using folios. Uh, we've converted large chunks of the uh, memory management subsystem to use folios, at least internally. Some now have fo only folio-based APIs. Some that still have uh, uh, compatibility uh, functions. But um, in general, most of the memory management subsystem is now converted to the point where somebody came up to me last night and said, aren't you basically done? I was like, well, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> 77,997, no, we're not, we're, not, we're not nearly done. Um, there's a lot of code outside of MM that is using struct page, perhaps more than uh, many of us recognized. Me, I, I had no idea we were quite this. I, I didn't think I was taking on a, a, a 9,000 mentions of struct page problem, and you know maybe I should have looked into it a bit more first. But um, fortune favors the bold, I'm told. Um, we've started the buffer head conversion, and, th and this was uh, partly for ext4's benefit and partly for the benefit of uh, just, just trying to move, uh, remove various users of the compatibility APIs. So every, every time we do a conversion from using a page API to using a folio API, we remove code from the text segment of the kernel. We actually shrink the number of instructions executed by the kernel because we're no longer calling compound head. We're no, and it, this removes like 60 bytes worth of instructions each time we, we remove a call to compound head. Um, on x86, it's something like 15 instructions. 
which is just terrifying, terrifyingly huge. Um, so, you know, it's always justifiable to convert code from using pages to using folios, just because you can guarantee I'm definitely working on the head page and I'm, I, I, I can ignore all of this stuff that's converting. Like every time you call put page, we call compound head. And we've called put page everywhere. We have thousands of callers of put page. So if you can convert a put page to a folio put, that's, it, it, it turns out to be significant. So we have a number of patch sets that are out for review. Um, I'm as guilty as anyone as not reviewing the patches, the patch sets that at least weren't written by me. And I've, I've had a lot of review on um, my patch sets, and I'm, I'm very grateful for the, to those who have been reviewing my patch sets um, and the patch sets from others. Um, so I wanted to call out four in particular that are outstanding for review. So adding the... Um, ZS malloc um, memory descriptor um, and adding the page table uh, memory descriptor. Both those patches, but patch series could do with uh, further review from people who know those, uh, who, who know that sort of area of the kernel. Um, I, I have the netmem series out. That's actually had um, a fair amount of review, I, and that's on me. I need to uh, fix up all the uh, the comments and repost it. And similarly for the set PTEs patch set. Uh, set PTEs is, is a new API for um, architectures to use in order to set up multiple page table entries at once. And this is kind of significant for architectures like ARM64, which support uh, using 64K TLB entries in when using a four kilobyte page table entry. So this is allowing us to use the resources of the processor more efficiently. It is somewhat similar to being able to use THPs. Um, this was not the original goal. This wasn't why we were doing it. A lot, a lot of memory management people and architecture people said, oh, you know, this, this is the primary reason for doing it. This, this will increase our efficiency by X percent. And there are efficiencies to be gained here, but it's not the primary reason that we're doing it. Um, there were also benefits on... Um, AMD CPUs as of, I believe, the Zen 2 microarchitecture. It will transparently use a 32 kilobyte TLB entry if you put eight compatible entries together. Um, it will notice that it can use a, a, a larger TLB entry and it will transparently do it. That's different from ARM. ARM requires this kind of interface in order to set the magic bits which tell the CPU, hey, it's safe to do it. On AMD systems, they simply notice. Um, I'm, I'm sure there are other systems with other uh, requirements for using larger TLB entries, and hopefully the set PTEs interface, as opposed to just having the set PTE calls end times, hopefully the, this interface will be good enough to support everyone. If it's not, now's a really good time to let me know. So what, 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 what should we be talking about today? This is a development conference. Um, we have a number of talks on the schedule uh, to tackle some of the bigger issues. Um, sunsetting buffer heads is next, and then we have supporting large block sizes. Um, and both of these are enabled by the folio work. Well, supporting large block sizes is, and sunsetting buffer heads is, uh, um, it's just gonna be a good idea, and if we can get rid of buffer heads, that's a whole bunch of code that doesn't need to be converted. Um, move, we, we, we have better interfaces available for uh, get user pages, or we, we, we hope to have that, and, and Jason's gonna be talking about this, that this afternoon. Uh, Luis is going to be talking about uh, converting more file systems over to using multi-page folios, and that's tomorrow. Uh, the, the one I'm most interested in is uh, multi-page anonymous memory. So most, most of the work that's been done so far is file system based because that's the code that I knew the best. Um, so, but, but it's also going to be very important to have anonymous memory also managed in uh, larger chunks. So I, I hope to not do any of that work. I think I've demonstrated quite thoroughly over the last couple of years that I have no idea what I'm doing with anonymous memory. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see other people stepping in and, and 
um, doing this work. Um, I was hoping in James's talk yesterday we, we might get to the meaning of map count, and of course we, we, ha we had a grand argument about it and uh, came to no conclusions, which didn't really surprise me, but uh, you know, um, trying to understand how map count works is um, it's tricky. Um, and then, just for Mike, I decided, it, Mike, Mike pointed out yesterday that uh, we have uh, a shortage of GFP flags and blamed me for it. Um, so I, 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 th I thought I'd help out by talking about how we could get one of them back, and that is to reclaim the, uh, the comp bit. So the MM people are probably at this point think, why, why do you need to explain this? And the file system people and, and the file system people are all thinking, what on earth is this? Um, so bear with me. So the, uh, the, 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 the top illustration here represents what happens if you don't use GFP comp. Um, and you say, I want to allocate an order to page. You get, well, very little. You, 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 get, you get your memory, uh, but the, uh, the MM does not fill in very much. And this annoys the, uh, the hardening people, actually, because they, 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 they want to know, does this, uh, let's say, copy to user extend beyond the boundaries of the allocation? And if you look at the bottom one, that's, that's what you get if you, if you do set the GFP comp bit. You, get to s you, 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 you can look at an address and say, what page does this belong to? And maybe it's the, maybe, maybe it's the second one. And in that second one, it's, you can say, oh, this is a tail page. I can see this is a tail page. It has compound head set. And then you can go from your, your tail page to your head page. And from your head page, you can see the order of the page, which happens to be stored on the second page. But you didn't know whether you were on the second page or the third page or the fourth page. Um, so from, the, from, 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 from knowing the order, you know the size of the allocation, and the hardening code can check, uh, does this mem copy or, or, or copy to user extend beyond the bounds of this allocation? You try and do that to a non-compound allocation, it's like, hmm? Um, and, and this has actually been a problem. This, this, they, 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 they try to do this, and the bug reports flowed in, and, and, and so the hardening people disabled it. It's like, we, we can't do this at this point. Um, and so Case Cook has been on me for a while, like, can you fix this, can you fix this, can you fix this? Well, we, we, we've got a lot of users to go through who are doing non-zero order allocations and making sure that they do in fact set the compound flag. Um, there are some other uh, grotty details with um, uh, doing a non-compound order allocation. For one thing, if you do a compound allocation, you can just use put page or Folio put, in order to, to get rid of it, in order to free it again. Whereas if you're doing a non-compound allocation, you have to call free pages, and you have to tell free pages what the order is of the allocation that you have, and maybe you got that wrong, and, and now you have corruption. And there was a race that we had until like three years ago when I fixed it, and I fixed it badly, and somebody else fix, fixed my fix, and it, it's all really grotty code to try and figure out how to handle um, how, how to handle spurious rep counts. So, what I would like to do is get rid of uh, non-compound allocations. I do want to say it is perfectly safe to set the compound, the, the, the GFP comp bit on zero order allocations. The, uh, the, the, the MM is smart, the, the, the page allocator is smart enough to not do anything in that case. Uh, so you don't have to worry that set, you know, doing an order zero allocation, setting the GFP comp bit is going to start corrupting other pages. That, 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 that doesn't happen. Um, so we, we could just say GFP comp is now always enabled, um, which, would make, which would free up a flag and make Mike happy. So I thought I'd talk about some of the uh, pitfalls that we have. Um, we, we've, we've changed some of the semantics, uh, hopefully for the better. Uh, for example, some functions now return a bool or an erno uh, when they used to return something different. And that sometimes trip people up who are doing conversions and not thinking about the conversion very thoroughly. They're just replacing 
like doing it automated rather than uh, looking at the function signatures and uh, um, modifying it correctly. But hopefully they're, they're, they're better semantics. We, we've generally, well, like, generally when we've, we've changed the semantics, it's been for a good reason. Um, so yeah, we, 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 didn't, we didn't do that lightly. Um, sometimes when people are doing conversions, they need to really think a little bit more carefully um, when they're doing the conversion. So for example, in, in some file systems, we check for the end of file by shifting the, uh, the byte address down and checking is that equal to the index of the page that it's in. Well, that doesn't work for a multi-page folio. Right? You, if, if, if you shift the position of the, 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 the offset in the file down, it, it now needs to lie within the range of the folio. And we have, a, we have a helper function for that because that's a fairly common thing to want to do. So we, 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 we can ask, is, is, is the size of the file within this folio? Um, we just need to know to use it. Rather than doing the mechanical conversion, we need to think about what is this function doing and use the appropriate helper that has been provided. Um, when we're doing conversions, if you see almost anything that has the word page in it, particularly in uppercase, you probably need to think carefully about exactly what it is um, it's doing. So if you see page size, it's like, well, maybe I can just replace that with folio size. Uh, but if you see max buff per page, um, that's like how, how many blocks can there be in a page? And we have several places where that's used to size an array uh, that's allocated on the stack. Um, you, you can't do that for a, 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 an arbitrary size folio. I mean, yes, C does, and GCC in particular, does support having arb, um, uh, um, variable size arrays on the stack. But if you have a two megabyte page and a 512 byte block, that's going to be a, th um, Sorry? Stack yeah, stack overflow, exactly. And, and, and we actually, we actually have already have compiler warnings on uh, the hexagon architecture for, for those functions because that has a config 256 kilobyte page option. And so that already blows the stack out of, uh, out of proportion. So we're just gonna be fixing up bad code here if we can get rid of those arrays. Yes, James. Okay, I'll, I'll just repeat the question. Okay, the, the question was, are, um, in, in, in SCSI, we, we just need a lot of memory. So we allocated a single page, and uh, what, what, what is the intended replacement for that, rather than just calling get free pages? Uh, it, the question is, is it kmalloc? And the answer is yes, it's kmalloc. Um, the, the, a, a lot of this code comes from legacy times when it was faster just to do what, what you were doing. It was the right decision at the time. Uh, but since that time, we've improved uh, the slab allocators, and it is just as fast to call kmalloc. Um, you, you actually get back a pointer instead of an unsigned long. Freeing it is better. There's, there's, there's just so much. You, you get error checking. You get, you get so much. It's, it's, it's just worth doing. Yeah. So, I mean, you could say, well, that's code that's not kept up with the times, but honestly, <laughs> we, we, we have, what, 11 million lines of code in the kernel these days? There's so much code that needs to be updated to do that. Uh, should, should he continue to use kmalloc brackets page size? Sure. Why not? Why not? If, if it works for you, then, then keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, just because you're seeing a red flag doesn't mean it's not a relationship worth entering. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, so we do have a problem with uh, KMAP local folio. Um, and I wanted to expand, and, and, and honestly, that's, going, that's almost a topic for an entire talk by itself. I would dearly love us to uh, use HiMem a lot less. Um, so there, 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 there are definitely places where I'm going to be talking very seriously to file system people. Hey, maybe we just stop supporting putting uh, directories in high mem. Perhaps directories can always live in low mem these days. 
uh, given the current state of 32-bit systems uh, that actually run a modern Linux. I'm, I'm running out of time, so I just want to say, if, if, if you're having the question about which of these five functions to use, um, you've probably made some poor life decisions, and uh, if you can't figure it out for yourself, come talk to me. Don't just do a direct replacement if you, if you happen to come across one of these functions. Most of us won't. Um, last slide, I promise. Um, I've, I've heard from some file system people saying, oh, are we going to run into locking problems because now we only have one lock per folio instead of one lock per page? And in it, in it, it I, I don't quite know how to answer this question because I don't quite understand what, what question they're asking. Um, there's always only been one lock per folio. Uh, sorry, one, one lock per compound page. So uh, if, if you call lock page on a tail page, it has always locked the head page. But in, in a different sense, it is a very legitimate question because um, it used to be that you got one you, you, you got one lock per four kilobyte chunk of memory, and now you're getting one lock per chunk of however much the uh, VFS has decided to allocate for you to read into. But the real answer to this is that the page lock is not highly contended. Uh, the longest hold that we have on the page lock, or now the folio lock, is while we're doing I.O. in order to bring the page up to date. So it, it is taken at the point that it is allocated and it is freed when the read completes in order to bring the page up to date. Um, I'm sorry, I, 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 yeah, I meant the lock is released when we bring the page up, up to date. Um, so the contention that you're seeing, the, the, uh, particularly from the memory management point of view, when you're saying, oh my god, the MMAT lock is held and we need to drop the MMAT lock in, in order to uh, wait on, on the I.O., yes, but that's not really the problem. The problem is you've just got to wait for I.O. to complete. Um, it's not that we really have significant lock contention on that lock. Similar kinds of things about we only track accessed or dirty per folio instead of per page. Um, we, can still track fo we can still track dirtiness on a, a, a per block level, but that's now up to the file system. The page cache is keeping track of it per folio and will tell you, yes, this folio contains dirty blocks, and then it's up to the file system. It, it can choose whether or not it is going to keep track of dirtiness at a per block level. Um, I've, I've, I've seen buggy patches that uh, think the hardware poison flag, it's per folio, it's not, it's per page. Um, this, this, this is a misfeature of our APIs. I need to figure out how to poison it so that you can't, um, you can't actually ask, does this folio have the poison bit set? Because you're actually only testing the head page of the folio. Um, that's uh, some kind of programming. And then I left this bullet on the slide instead of deleting it, sorry about that. All right, that is everything I have, and that is my time, but uh, yes, James. So you began this by comparing uh, ARM on 64K pages versus 4K pages, and you said some workloads work better. After you've done all of this, because on x86 we can't do this, so, but after you've done all of this, do you think that performance gap will come down sufficiently, or should we also be trying to pressure Intel to use larger pages for the uh, CPU? Because as you said, if we can manage memory in larger chunks, and perhaps two megabytes is too large a chunk to manage memory in, should we have intermediate page sizes? I don't think we need to pressure Intel. I, I, I think people who buy CPUs are going to be pressuring Intel. Um, but I mean, Intel have been aware of this problem for a while, that they, they don't. Um, I mean, I, I was at Intel when they noticed that they had this problem, and that was a few years ago. Um, well, we, 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 we can't directly influence the CPU design, but, but, but we, can, we can make it happen so much more frequently that Intel have no choice but to add CPU, hard to hardware features. Okay, the, 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 um, yeah, um, it, it, it's basically, it, it, is, is this, go is, is there still going to be pressure on Intel or is this going to improve uh, the management of pages enough? And 
what I have seen on benchmarks on other CPUs is that about half of the performance improvement comes from just managing memory in larger chunks, and half of it comes from actually using the 64 kilobytes uh, TLB entries. So there is still going to be significant pressure on Intel to do better than they currently do. I mean, uh, what you said earlier that uh, AMD uh, performs it uh, uh, implicitly. Yes, Intel, in, in, Intel can choose well. to do exactly right. what AMD so are doing. Once we use uh, follow, we manage everything in larger chunks, uh, they can do that optimization in their CPU without us needing to do anything. Yeah. So. Just to comment, um, like I think for some cases it's really important that we have like small pages still around. For example, if you think about page tables, like it occupies four kilobyte. If you manage your memory in 64 kilobyte chunks, you end up eventually wasting a lot of memory or you have to play all of these hacks that some of the architectures do to squeeze in multiple page tables into a single one. So if we, if we could find a way to have like small pages and still get the benefit that you said by using these uh, yeah, higher order folios just to get, make hardware happy and fast, that would be awesome. Right. Best, best of both worlds, I would say. I mean, that's so, so, so that basically is what, what, what we were doing. We, we are not going to suddenly start allocating page tables in 64K chunks. I mean, if, if, you, if you build a, an, a, an ARM kernel with a config 64K page size, it does then start allocating page tables in 64K chunks. Uh, but we're, we're not talking about doing that. We're, we're talking about keeping the base page size at 4K. You can still choose to allocate 4K pages. Page tables will still be 4K in size, um, but you can choose to allocate your anonymous memory and your page cache memory in whatever size actually makes sense for that file. So if, you, if you're M mapping a four kilobyte file, we're still going to allocate a four kilobyte page. And we're still going to manage that particular 4K chunk. And more importantly, when if you are mapping a larger file or you know, calling, uh, you know, call malloc and, and, and get some anonymous memory, um, that can still be mapped at an arbitrary page granularity. So we're not breaking that back with compatibility, unlike when you build a config 64K page size and all of a sudden you can only map things at 64 kilobyte granularities. So just like with a THP, you can choose to map it any way you want to. Yeah. That's perfect. So, like, I, I guess, like, we should then pressure Intel or whatsoever uh, to to support other page table layouts, but not to support like higher order page granularity. Essentially, like, we want yeah. 4K pages. We 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 want for everybody wants 4K pages. That that that's kind of baked into the computer computer industry at this point. Uh, the Android team is looking at changing the page size from 4K to 16K because we expect that will significantly improve performance of the memory management system. A uh, disadvantage we are aware of is that it will increase the I.O. overhead because the, uh, when a page is dirty, the smallest unit that will be written is 16K. Is this something that would be interesting for users of Intel CPUs to have the page size of uh, support for a page size of 16K? Well, I, 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 don't, I don't control what Intel does. I, I, I don't. I don't. I don't. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I, this, this, this is kind of not what we're talking about, right? We're, we're, we're talking about improving software. When it happens to improve hardware performance as well, that's great. But really, we're, we're trying to improve how our software works. Um, Bart, just to answer you, I guess quite of some of these answer, uh, things will be answered if and when we are able to do large block IO, because that's precisely it. And then you could choose to see eradicate what are the benefits of using large block IO and then you can always switch or not depending on the results.